Hello and welcome to web learning where knowledge is shared. If you missed the free demo board giveaway, I suggest that you register to the site and also click on the notification bell as the free demo boards are only available for the first 48 hours after I load the video. In this episode, I'll cover the UART with interrupt. And for this, you have to have some previous knowledge on the STM32 Cubemix, how to use it, and also how to use some other features. So let's get started. So new project, board selector, as always, I'm using the Nucleus 64 with the L053 on it. In today's tutorial, I'm going to use the URTX and RX. This is user 2. So I'll enable it, and you see the green pins. The clock configuration doesn't really matter. Um, the peripherals can work much faster, even though the core clock is working slow. But as always, I can turn it on to 32 megahertz. I click Enter and Enter, and everything is set internal oscillator so UR2 is configured I'll use 115 200 and this time I'm going to use the interrupt so I have to turn the NVIC on click OK so this is UR2 interrupt I'll use the Kyle code generator there's nothing to do here and at VET settings uh, again there's nothing to do here click OK open project the Kyle is doing some uh, update and I got I got ready I can close this and we have our code so to better understand how the UART with interrupt works I paired some short presentation with the help of uh, someone from ST and this will give you a, a better understanding on how the functions are written and how they work I'll go through them quite quickly so in the receive flow you have the peripheral initialization, and then you have the how you are to receive interrupt. Then you can have either OK, arrow, and busy. And then there is the IRQ handler, so the interrupt handler that goes to the how you are to interrupt handler, and then you get either end process callback or error callback. So with the transmit flow, it's just the same, but works the other way. So how does it work? In the transmit, we have the code that is peripheral initialization plus the HAL UART IRQ handler, everything is generated by, by the QB mix. The user need to define the HAL UART transmit interrupt and the callbacks. In the receive flow, it's the same. So we have the peripheral initialization. This is in the HAL MSP.C. The interrupt can be either generated in its own separate file, but again, uh, you can have it in your under the main, so this is your code. Both callbacks are defined as weak and you can change them in the halur.c. So the user at IRQ handler is generated in the STM32 interrupt, then it's defined in the halur.c, then we need to send buffer over the UART non block functions. So every time we get the data, it goes into the buffer. If we get any interrupt from the UART, then we know that the buffer either is empty or full and with there we can either transmit information or receive more data. So the how you are process the information, sends more data or receive more data possible. Then if the data buffer is empty, we have the complete callback. If there is anything wrong, we get an error. So let's see how it works. So first of all, we have the UART initialization, then the UART send buffer if we have data and we want to send it. Then the UART transmits the register, send more data if we have any, or manage the errors if there are any errors. The two functions that we need to use are between your code begin and we have the how you are transmit interrupt or the how you are receive interrupt. So as always, we need of course some buffers to work with. So we have the TX buffer and RX buffer, both of them in the size of 10. Now we go to user code begin. This is before the while, but after the initialization of the UART. So the functions are HAL, UART, receive, but this time with interrupt. And we can see that we need the UART handler, so HUR2. Now we need the data. The data is our receive or transmit. This time is the receive. And the size, this time it was 10, because we set it at 10. The same thing we need to do for the transmit.
this is the second part of the code so we did the receive interrupt and the transmit interrupt now we need to handle all the errors or the, in the interrupt callback for that we'll go all the way to the bottom close to the end in the user code begin for so this is the hard UART RS callback the nope is used to put a breakpoint if we're debugging because as a function the debugger doesn't know how to stop here so if you want to put a breakpoint you have to put a nope so you will be able to debug it save let's compile so zero error zero warnings I already set my dock light for communication I'll open to see and make sure which COM port I'm using so COM4, COM4 ST mi microelectronics ST link at 115 So I'm going to run the code. You can see that the buffer has all the numbers and the receive buffer is empty. And I'll click run and it stop. And then we can see in decimal that we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9, 8 and 9. And if I continue to run, I can click on the keyboard and I have to put uh, 10 numbers. So 1, 2, 3, for and you can see them changing on the left pane six seven eight nine and zero for ten and then we have the callback i hope you enjoyed this click subscribe so you get notifications when i'm loading new videos thank you